What's going on guys? Back out in the garage. 57 Chevy. Down here, DD Speed Shop. Uh, I did a little bit of work uh, without the camera on. Put the front bumper on. Didn't want to wrestle that on the camera on because that's embarrassing. We got the fenders uh, bolted on. They were just sitting there, so that's all dialed together, which is kind of nice. The doors open and close real easy. They don't hit the fenders. That's always a plus side, eh? What else did I get going? I think that was about it. I cleaned up. Lots of room to make a mess now. Anywho, so I think the plan today, well, this video, we're going to get whatever junk is left in here out, so basically the seats. Um, kind of hold the wiring up a little, lay down the carpet, put it where I want. I got to pick up some sill plates yet, so I don't have any. But we can get that all in so I can lie on that, start securing the, the computer, and get some of this wire tied up. I do got to pull the steering wheel and the cluster out, so maybe we'll do that too. I'm not really too sure. We got to build some brackets for these seats. Um, these seats sit real low, and they weren't terrible for me, but they're they're terrible for Danny. And if she ever drives this thing, which I don't see why she wouldn't, um, I like to have it just a little bit higher. So I got to build some spacers or a block or do something. And that's classic Tri Five stuff. Tri Fives only came with bench seats, so. That's where they bolt on each side and then they step up here. So the seats are a little cattywampus and I like to push them backwards a little bit. So you're trying to bolt on an angle. It's it's a bit of a pain. That is the one thing I dislike about these things. Which uh, really you should repop the floor with uh, a flat or a, or something there for, uh, for the portly man who wants to set a bucket seats in his hot rod. I can't be the only guy that sees that, right? I got junk in my face. You know, working hard. So that's what we're going to do, get everything cleaned out. I think I have a carpet in the basement. We'll just flop it in there, kind of make it look nice, and see where the video takes us. It's like a journey, we'll be on it together. Uh, so I was cleaning it out, then uh, Murr and brother came by, he's out of town, so we talked for a little bit. But uh, anyways, I got it real cleaned out, give it a quick vacuum, so it's, it's almost a shame to cover up. Wires just run to the back. Oh, so much work, just gets covered up. Um, then I ran out real quick, and I bought a set of uh, sill plates, 100 bucks, bit of a rip for two of them, but... It really does make a car uh, a difference. It makes the car look obviously like a two door, two door sill plates. Uh, the carpet we're gonna put in. This is the carpet I guess was in the '56, so hopefully it's cut to fit this car as well. I actually bought um, like knockoff Dynamat, but I never used it, and I don't think I'm gonna use it. I undercoated the floor, and then this has the uh, the padding in it, so it'll be good. I might do the roof. I doubt the stuff sticks to rust very well though. And eh, touch not that bad. So we'll see me able to do that real race car stuff. Anyways, I'll uh, we'll wrestle the carpet in here. Then we'll lay all the wiring down, see what we got, start putting it all together, and then I'll start mocking up some seats. At least we'll get them kind of bolted down. We can always pull the driver's seat out if we have to get under there some more, but it's about to look like a car in a frickin' hurry.
Okay, so I got the wiring kind of dialed together. At least enough it's presentable. So, we have, I put the fan switch there. I, I like having a toggle. We got the headlight switch in. Uh, the ignition switch is just dangling, but it goes right there. We got the Holly mounted up in there. Um, I was going to screw it. I ended up just zip tying it and hanging it for right now. I have to build a little bracket because all that's back there is the heating stuff. And I don't know if it would be a big deal, but I kind of feel like it might get a little warm. So I'd like to have it spaced away from that. That's what we're going to secure it to. Uh, so that's all the wires. We got the high low beam in, carpet fits and all that. So next I wanted to troubleshoot the uh, the steering and stuff. So we had no horn, we had no no nothing. Well, this is actually quite a quite a process to take us all apart. Oh, I should have taken this off first actually. Oh, can't really see in there. But I can show you this stuff. So the way it works, this is the horn button. As you kind of wiggle it around, it grounds itself on the wheel, and this is what goes between them. Well, look at this, like there's no way you're getting any contact on that. Because there's a contact on the inside, that piece right there. So it rubs on that, which has a little ring, and then that contacts down here. So, obviously dirty contact, we'll clean that up, I believe it'll work. Because I took the little contact out and I moved it over. If we use test light, it did trigger the horn, so that wire is actually good. Now in here, you can see the mechanism. Everything is working in there. Unfortunately, this little piece is on the back side of that. This is a known good one. Murph fixed this years ago. This one I probably take apart and clean. That's all. This place gets dirty in there, but everything's all together. Dead moth. Dead moth. So I'll. Uh, Take this junk off real quick and replace this with two screws put it back together and i should be able to test it with all apart like this which is nice and if that works we'll slam it back together clean up the horn ring and yeah actually you know what i should probably do the bezel while the horns off. i bet this all has to come off because this runs under it so yeah anyways we'll test the signal out and then we can start pulling this apart maybe we'll wire this while we're at it it's funny how plans go so I've got this thing like completely yarded apart in here, but uh, it all works. So that's the original to so something else. I think it's actually on my 55 uh, turn signal switch. We got the old one. I didn't use the connector. I just spaded it in there for now. But anyways, check this out. We're going to do a little test. All the lights work. So this would go in the car like that. So no, I guess should I go to the front? We have to be front and back, but uh, so there it should be really working. Yeah. We got what side's that? The passenger side? Yeah. Does it have a back one? You're gonna do a few laps. <laughs> yeah, I see flashing. Flashy flash, okay, and I'll do the other side. Ah, I got stuck. Well, that side's working for sure. Yeah. The front, so that's good. Now, here's the thing I hooked up. Hang on. This is the brake brake plate. The brake plate switch now. The brake plates? There's not. What? Do it again? I just tested them. I thought they were. This is very You doing it? Not working. Power up here. Oh, something just happened. There we go. <laughs> I had it. I and hot it. rod Jesus on the 84th day. But now, so we should have turn signal, right, on one side? Yeah. And we have the brakes. We have the brakes too? Yeah. Look at that. So everything works. Um, for that, unfortunately, it's Saturday. Unfortunately, it's Saturday, but we got live stream right away. So I'm shutting her down. We got to heat up the garage. So it's a gong show, but it works. I should be able to finish this up tomorrow. I might even work late tonight, so I had to take this completely apart. All this stuff with little spring clips and stuff. So roll pins. 
So we can jam that back together. We know the signal switch will work, and I'm pretty confident if I just clean that horn ring, this is not going to conduct much horning. Because all it has to do is ground. That's how the horn works. It has power to it, and you ground it on that, and it works. So she ain't getting no ground. Okay. That's it for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. And you know, we'll, we got, we'll finish off the dash. Yeah, this thing's gonna be all wired up tomorrow. We'll put seats in, sill plates on. Waiting on drive shaft. See you later. All right guys, next day, uh, I jumped ahead just a little bit. We had to call them and all that apart, but I pulled the cluster out. I actually just had two screws holding it in, but uh, we had to have this stuff off. Uh, so, just kind of show you. We have the wires. I know it looks kind of like a spaghetti monster here, but they're all pretty simple. Now, what I've done on this, I did on a couple other Tri Fives, is I just ground all these little sensors with a with a one little ground wire. This is supposed to ground itself kind of through the the points and all that. This one's actually in really nice shape. Some of the other ones I have, they're all corroded and stuff like that. And I always feel just just it's gonna work, and also actually works for test purposes, which is pretty sweet. These ones here I've looped together, those are all for the backlighting. Now on Tri-5, that's one signal, that's the other signal, that's your high beam indicator, and then this will be our fuel gauge, so one is power and one is the sender. So we gotta do that. Over here is temp, we're not gonna use that. I should be able to test this. This is a little tricky one-handed. Yep, I might struggle a little. But if we plug the power in, you know what, I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just run the ground wire to my test light lead. So there's our lights. I have it currently hooked up to the dash lights. That shows up on camera. They're all working. So now if we steal this power, because we have 12 volts here, we can put it to uh, the turn signal. Now obviously it's not going to flash because there's no flasher in it. Can I reach the other side? Bam. Boop. That's good. And then the center high beam. This is always the best part of these things. It's a little uh, red bow tie. Look at that. High beam on, high beam off, high beam on, high beam off. So that's very simple. Here are all the wires. Of course, I got jammer here. These are the wires that we'll connect to. So the blue ones are indicator left and right. The Red one, I believe, is the sender. I believe green is high beam. Uh, the purple one might be tachometer, which I'm not going to use. And this is just power to the gauges. And then this blue wire is run right off the headlight switch, which turns the power on and off. So that's all you got to do. I'll just uh, run the wires through here, snap together. We'll slide that back in. Uh, maybe I'll set the laps up, so I should be able to slide that back in, kind of put a few screws in it, and start putting this column back together. I might put a little bit of grease in there, and hopefully I remember how it all goes together, because that's pretty important. And I will have to uh, put on, this is the, the backing piece where my switch, which last night we just changed, will have to be screwed on. So that's the plan. It really has to come apart to change everything. But that's the last bit of the kind of wiring there. The only stuff we don't have hooked up is the heater control, which is one wire, because uh, it goes 12 volts in, and then the switch goes through resistor and all that. We have to run one wire to the wipers, I think. That's all we got for wiring. So that's pretty simple. Now, obviously, radio and stuff like that, uh, the tack, all, none of that's hooked up just yet. We'll have to get to it. Anyways, I'll uh, keep jamming.
Uh, it definitely just kind of fought me to go back together, but we did get her. So just double check, but the, uh, the lights still work. That's all good. Um, our signals. So that's working, and of course they work in the back too, or in the front as well, but... So that's working. Now the next deal is the horn. So the horn is all dialed, so if I take my test light, which is hooked to ground, and I just ground it, so it works. So now all I gotta do is use all this remaining stuff to ground it, so I've cleaned up the little contact there, because it was all mangled. And then all these little pieces here all got to be cleaned up. I cleaned up the little contact. This is what's going to join the horn ring to everything. So clean that up. A little spring in there. And it all goes back together. And then everything should work. Now the only thing I got to do, which I should have before, is make sure the wheel was straight on here. But uh, whatever. We'll put it all together with only two screws to uh, take the cover off and a little mess around down the road, but that's, it's good, rebuilt, fixed, old stuff, just, you know, old stuff, you can take it apart, clean it, and put it back together, and it will work, what a concept, look at this fine wheel, <coughs> works, uh, and you know what's cool, I saw all my tripods never have any of the horn stuff, but, uh, they actually, like, the cancelling signals work, eh, Pretty sweet. We got everything dialed together. All the lights and stuff. So now all this, I gotta make this look pretty, obviously, because it's not. Uh, zap strap all that up. I gotta run a couple of wires. This is for the Holly. I got I undid three wires, so I gotta do that. And that speedo cable, I gotta run that up into the back. Otherwise, I think it's all done. Put some screws to the cluster, just one screw. I gotta put some screws on that. The bottom uh, plate on and the wiring is done inside the car I'll run the uh, heater wire and stuff like that. I can get through it through there uh, I think next shifter well maybe I'll put the seats in so I know where I want to be then the shifter sill plates I'm calling it a day I'm calling it a video this thing is like together together tomorrow drive shaft hopefully I can get that dialed together real quick and then it's like fit in glass and little odds and ends, but it's it really came together in a hurry. I don't know. Anyways, I'll uh, see you guys when I'll, I'll clean this all up, then we'll come back and we'll start fitting stuff down. So here's how I like to mount the seats. Uh, I move them back just a little bit. Uh, this is actually all the way forward, but Danny still can drive it. Um, I move it back so I have a little bit of room for my long legs. Um, so. That side's flat, this side has the same bump added to it, so it's like inch and three quarter type thing. The back I did two and two and a half, two and a quarter, something like that, whatever that is. So I'm not a huge fan of these giant spacers, but I think what I'll do is just weld a bar between them on both sides, now that they're in, and that'll give it lots of strength. Shouldn't have any issues, I mean, not that it's going all over the place anyways, I'm sure it's fine, but I kind of like having the seat pretty sturdy and uh, I'm also put seat belts in this thing so yeah, I am a believer in seat belts flat belts at the very least so you got that I did put in the sill plate which probably will have to come out because I'll be doing body work and painting in there but just I want to see what it look like next well now that I can sit in here I'll set the shifter where I want it and I don't know if I'll do the other seat right away or, or not because I might have to build the brackets and all that's nice to still get in and out but that's pretty simple because that side Really, I already have the measurements. I'll put it in, uh, and, uh, auger up the holes, and, and bolt her down. It's super, super simple. And not gonna lie, it's actually a great day out today. And we have some chores to do out in the yard. So, uh, but I want to like to get the shifter done, and then I can measure for my drive shaft. I think that's where I'm gonna end it today. So we got a lot done. The interior. I mean, I'll clean it all up and show it one more time. Man, the interior is coming together on this thing. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. Okay, so. This is where I want the shifter to be. You guys sure are loving being on the tripod today. Um, so we put the shifter kind of where it's going to go. I put on the micro switches for uh, reverse lights and neutral safety. I'm only going to use neutral safety on this because we're not going to have any backup lights. I've already marked and put a pilot hole in 
where the hole is going to go uh, for the shifter cable. So that's supposed to be like, I don't know, three or four inches ahead of where the shifter is. So all we're going to do, we got to peel the carpet back just a little bit. Oh, gentle, gentle. So we can see the hole. Pilot hole, so we will make it bigger real quick, and then I'll run the, uh, the wire for the safety real quick. And then the carpet can be bolted down or secured down. Don't drill into your transmission while doing this. So this is the, I should have taken this apart ahead of time, this is the cable, this is the transmission side, it's got a couple little rubber boots to keep the road grime out of it, oh that's tight, and then these two nuts here are just the adjusters, let's take a slack of the cable once it's down the transmission, so you take all that off, it obviously makes the cable a lot easier to slip through. So I'm just going to check, but lots of room there. And this will route it. Put my hole. Just sneak this through. For safety, now lots of room up there. That's the hole for the shifter. Now, the shifter goes in on a Chevy. The shifter is on the left side, I think Ford's so maybe Dodge's are different. So, you want to have it go in and actually has to loop around the tail shaft of the transmission and back up to it. There you go, that's that. So now I gotta do, I gotta go through the hardware, just knocked over, and we'll hook this up, and it'll bring it back as we mount it. Okay, I got the shifter uh, where I want it, I got the cable bolted on. Now you're supposed to do the instructions say drill a bunch of holes and bolt this down. We're gonna self tapper it, because that's what I always do. It's much easier, and it works just fine. <laughs> Fine. Well, it's high quality Chevy steel, eh? You don't need to bolt it down. Honestly, if I could weld this, I would. I don't think it's done here. Or... Look at that. I ain't going nowhere. Bam. So now, that's all taken care of. We'll put that wire, we'll splice that to side one and then I don't know if this will just fit without trimming it might sometimes you gotta trim the bottom which is a pain but we put her pretty far back on a flat part of the tunnel but we won't have to ball on and we're done up top everyone always gets panicked about these uh, shifters and hates putting them in I was the same way then you keep buying cars that don't have shifters you have to embrace the suck then you get good at something so we'll get this all dialed together and then hook it up downstairs. I think that's it for today. Danny wants to play in the Bobcats. Yeah. We'll do that. So I got everything in here. We're just missing Danny's seat. She's sitting on the floor right now, but put the shifter kind of far back. So it's definitely better for me to drive this one, but everything works good. The gas pill be in a good spot. This is going to be like a nice driving car. I actually can't wait. So I think that's what we're going for right now. We actually got to go for dinner. It's uh my brother's birthday actually today. So we gotta do that and 
Oh, we've got to do it, but we want to. We've got Red Lobster. <laughs> we kind of love them. But, uh, so we got that. Uh, I'll probably come back after that. I'm going to measure the drive shaft, and maybe I'll put the seat in, do one last little cleanup, and we'll end the video there. But uh, that's it for now. <laughs> See you later. I don't even know what's going on, but it's been a couple of days. Anyways, uh, I did a little bit of screwing around. We're going to finish this video real quick and put the seat in. Uh, I've made a heck of a mess. Uh, I pulled all the headliner bows out. Actually, my buddy Josh was in town, and uh, he picked up a bunch of miscellaneous trim and stuff. I got two-door trim, a swap meat, and some, I don't know, whatever. So I got that. Um, anyways, this is the mess I'm making. So I have the... The spacers, or what do you want to call them, stands cut out for the seat on this side, so that'll be really easy to drill four holes, bolt it in. But I bought some of this, uh, it's like knockoff insulation, sound deadening. I'm hoping it gets a little bit of insulation factor. I'm working on the roof here, which is very tedious, but overall it's, it's coming together. Um, it says don't put it to dirt or uh, grease. Luckily it's just like 75 year old tar stuff, so hopefully that'll stick there. And I got these little fancy rollers. Woo. Oops. So I'm done in the back. I'm going to put the seat in so I have somewhere to sit on because it's brutal to work on it. So we'll jam the seat in. We'll film putting this in. And I'm not doing the best job, but whatever. Looks okay. I'm hoping it'll eliminate the. Uh... Oh, it really makes a big difference. That was like really tinny before. And Danny's car is brutal. But really, we'll have like a mint interior right away here. Okay, seat's all mounted up. This is the stuff I got. I got a box off Amazon off-brand stuff. I don't know what it is. It's uh, 50 square feet. Uh, I guess they're all about the same, maybe. Uh, having the bubble top of the roof kind of makes it a little goofy. I'm by far no expert. And I boned it when I started putting it in. I started putting it this way on these ones. And is that what I did? Oh yeah, I probably should have gone that way, but you know what? Whatever. Um, I just kind of brushed it all off. It's supposed to be onto like clean surface, but uh, well, it's not going to have that. tri fives have a big rubber piece or uh, asphalt or whatever this kind of stuff anyway, so there's like leftover tar, so it's going to be like tar on tar. So you take it, there's probably a lot of different ways to do this. Well, there's probably one way to do this, and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want here, but I just kind of jam it in, in the corners, get her you know, kind of close-ish. Well, that's, that's a practice piece right there. Uh, you know, it said there's instructions online, and I just went up what I saw people do on Instagram. I don't know if you're supposed to overlap it or what, but I didn't. So I just kind of stick it up. And it's got these different rollers, uh, big, medium, and small, or maybe there's even bigger than that. But this one's kind of for like edges. I don't know, that one's for smaller. So I just kind of get the, the part that's going to be touching the other piece first. And uh, I found that if you roll with the curve, it takes uh, any little lumps out. I don't know if she's supposed to do like X patterns or what, but I just kind of give her all over it. So there you go, there's that, and then I just kind of try and get in here. Best I can, and uh, well, it hasn't fallen off yet. I guess we'll see what happens. It's pretty sticky, and when a, a few parts I uh, once I get it on there, it kind of comes off like string cheese. So I assume that means it's stuck. So like I said, I did this, then I did it this way, and then I started doing this way again. So I, I don't know, that was that was dumb. Uh, but anyways, I just got a few little pieces left. So I did is I put it all in, then the end bits I kind of put in all this trim with a knife. So we'll do the rest in fast motion. I'll get this turd all cleaned up and uh, collar.
Look at this. You know, we might be coming on something here, putting a, a decent interior and stuff around again with a proper steering wheel and horn ring and everything works. What a concept. So that's what we got. Uh, it does seem like it works pretty good. Like, the roof was real tinny. No, it's not, versus... So apparently, you can put it like, you know, obviously inside of doors and stuff, and like, this is the factory stuff, which has fallen right off. So that stuff that was obviously in the roof and the quarters and all that. And I forget what it said percentage-wise, but you don't gotta even put that much in there to take it out, like a couple of strips or something like that. It'll take all that reverberation, or what you wanna call out of it. So I'll probably do the doors, the back quarter pieces, uh, while I'm at it, the carpet as it like you know has the foam in it and everything. I think this thing should be okay. Be a few rattles here and there, but you know what? This thing hasn't been messed with, so all the screws are still in all the trim, all the way around. All I'll have to do is put the trim in the back. We'll take out that tininess. We got the back seat as well. I might put a piece of cardboard or something or uh, not cardboard, backer board, whatever it's called. The thin, the thin crap there. Coroplast. I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments. You're already screaming at it. Put that in there, keep the heat and all that right in the car and vice versa. If I do decide to put air conditioning in this thing, make the cab nice. But I'm done for now. I got a heck of a mess to clean up. This stuff got everywhere. And it was a lot of work. And working above your head sucks. And wear safety glasses because I didn't and I got a piece of dirt in my eye. So don't be like me. Be smart. I'm stoked. This thing looks good. Hopefully drive shaft tomorrow. And uh, throttle cable, I got to make something or pick something up tomorrow. And maybe we'll drive it, or at least make sure the wheels turn. Rear end might be piled up in it, right? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.